morning to gospel according to luke chapter 23 gospel according to luke chapter 23 and please keep that chapter open we will be reading several verses from there before that let us look to the lord in a word of prayer gracious god our loving heavenly father we thank you for this blessed day that you have given us to be together we thank you for the safety that you have given us thank you for your love and your concern for our lives thank you for choosing us to be your own this morning lord we thank you for loving us even before we ever knew of you father thank you for delivering us by giving your son on our behalf on the cross of calvary we know that we are what we are because of your grace father we pray that you may bless this word and give to us that we may be blessed this morning speak to us according to our needs we thank you because you know the needs of everyone that are here today if there is a soul that do not know the lord jesus christ as their personal savior lord make this day a day of rejoicing in heaven that they may know christ and they may go back home as a new creature heavenly father we pray that if there is anybody who is backslidden out of god's will they may be brought back to the place where the lord want them to be and also we pray for the believers that are here they may be strengthened by the word in jesus precious name we pray amen and i am sure this chapter is so familiar to all of us because we read this chapter so often that it says jesus christ was tried in the political courts and also he was he had a trial in their religious court every one of the people who were there started accusing jesus christ of so many false accusations we know every one of those accusations that made against christ was false and utter lies and none of them could be proved what were the accusations that they made about christ look at that verse 2 there it says we found this fellow perverting the nation you know perverting the town that was one of the accusations they brought they brought against christ we know during the public ministry of jesus christ he was so concerned about the people of jerusalem he was so concerned about the people of israel and one time he looked at jerusalem and cried like this o jerusalem o jerusalem how often would i have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings but he would not that means he had a great concern for the people now they stand in front of jesus and accusing him saying that he is perverting the nation what a lie secondly in that same verse it says prevented to give tribute verse 2 forbidding to give tribute to the caesar in other words in the court these people were testifying against jesus christ that he told us not to pay tax what a lie Matthew chapter 22 verse 21 They came and asked him once should we pay tax to the Caesar and Jesus said render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's Another time some people came and accused Jesus Christ and said you and your disciples don't pay tax that time he did not have any money to pay the tax so he called one of his disciples peter and said go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish first cometh up and when thou house 
open his mouth thou shall find a piece of money take that and give unto them for me and for you so you always encourage the people to pay taxes unto caesar he never said that but now standing in the court the people are testifying against him this fellow told us not to pay the tax what a lie number 3 third accusation you know john chapter 19 and verse 3 there says he teaches against the law of moses in other words they were trying this fellow is promoting the false teachings you know jesus christ in matthew chapter 5 verse 17 said think not thou I have come to destroy the law but I have come to fulfill it. Another time he said in verse 18 Verily I say unto you till heavens and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from law till the is all fulfilled. So he was always standing for the word of God standing for the law of Moses. Now in the court he was accused of false witness. Then chapter 23 verse 5 fourth accusation provoked the territory that they were more fierce saying he stirreth up the people. See he is telling to the king to pilot that he is a fellow who stir up stir up the people all the time against the nation you know when we study the life of jesus christ we know that wherever he went he always saw the peace i mean saw the seeds of peace he asked the people to be to remain peaceful another name for jesus christ was prince of peace how could prince of peace tear up the people against the government and ask the people to be un, you know but all the accusations were false but you know when we are trying to be faithful to the lord we can also face like that accusations after accusations and we may have to get into problems you know if jesus christ was accused of false accusations who was who are we we would face that at that time we will have to lift up and look at the face of jesus christ and remember the accusations that he faced while he was on this world that would give us the courage to face the accusations and the false witnesses that comes against us now i would like to speak to you this morning about the possibilities of the cross or the accomplishments of the cross what did jesus christ accomplish on the cross of calvary let me say briefly within the permitted time number 1 you can read luke chapter 23 verse 12 On the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together for they were at enmity between themselves One of the accomplishments of the cross of Calvary was the foes were made friends In this verse says Herod and Pilate were enemies They didn't like each other They were not in talking terms but you know on that very day when jesus christ was crucified both those enemies became friends that was a great accomplishment and then when we study the scripture that is what jesus exactly did on the cross the death of jesus christ made two enemies friends Romans chapter 5 verse 10 says we were enemies to God 
Christ died on the cross to reconcile us with an almighty God. Dear brothers and sisters, you and I were enemies to God. But today, because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, the foes were made friends with God. He reconciled us. What a great privilege to call yourself as a friend of an almighty God who created everything just by the words of his mouth. The world might think that you are nobody. But you know, you are son of the king of kings. Sovereign God, almighty God. What a great privilege. And also in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 says, For he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. You know, the law of Moses, the law has only built partition between the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jews had nothing to do with the Gentiles, nor the Gentiles had nothing to do with the Jews. They had made a partition. Thank God on the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ broke down that partition wall and made us one in Christ Jesus. The foes were made free, made free, made friends. Religion always only separated men. But Jesus Christ always joined them together. The cross of Christ made man peace with God. That was the first accomplishment. Number two, read Luke chapter 23 verse 25. Pilate released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus to be crucified. The sinner was made free. Pilate released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus Christ to be crucified. What did he accomplish? The death delivered Barabbas the murderer. That Barabbas could stand and say that I was a murderer. I would have been put on that cross. But Jesus took my place and made me free. That is another great accomplishment of the cross. Why Jesus Christ came to deliver this Barabbas, the murderer, from his sin. So that gives us the message that a sinner does not have to be punished again. Instead, Christ is punished and this is the salvation Christ promised for all people. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15 says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came to this world to save sinners. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, For he hath made him to be a sin for us. He knew, he knew no sin that we might be made righteousness of God in him. So today Barabbas could say, because of him, I am made free. I don't have to die because he died on my place, because he released me. And I'm glad that every one of us can testify the same. I am free because he took my place. Third, verse 26. This is something that I like the most. The family of Simon the Cyrenian was blessed.
when we study the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, we know one thing. Jesus Christ did not have the strength to carry that heavy cross all the way up to Golgotha. The previous night, he did not get a wink of sleep. The very night he was taken to court after court after court five times. He was beaten, he was ridiculed, he was, he was, you know, he was called all the things. People testified him all the things that he never thought in his life lied against him, shamed him. And as he had no strength to carry that cross, he may have fell. Then the Roman soldiers who were in charge of taking him to that Golgotha to be crucified found that Jesus cannot walk all the way up there. Then they saw Simon Serene there. You know, when you read that passage of the scripture, it says, Simon did not come of his own voluntarily to carry the cross of Christ. When he came, the soldiers called him and forced him to carry the cross of Christ. You know, many of the scholars think that this Simon the Sirene must have been a black Jew. As a Jew, he always thought it would be a curse to carry the cross. For the Jews, even the symbol of cross was a symbol of curse. So he thought, as per the law, if I carry this cross, I may be cursed. And not only that, even my children would be cursed, my generations would be cursed, and I don't want to be cursed, I don't want to carry that cross. But he had no choice. The Roman soldiers forced him to carry that cross. You know what happened? When you study the scripture, we know that he was not cursed. He was one of the most blessed men in the New Testament church at that time, in the first century. He was a known figure in the, among the churches in the New Testament, at New Testament time. How do you know that? You know, when we read Mark Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 21, says that this Simon had two children. One of them was Alexander, the other was Rufus. Now look at Romans chapter 16, verse 13. When Paul writes to the Romans, he says like that. Paul says, salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and my mother. You know, in my language, in our native tongue, that word chosen in the Lord, you know, it says like that, salute Rufus, the famous one in the Lord. That is how it is translated. That means he was a famous figure even to the Roman church. Who? Rufus, son of that man who carried the cross for Jesus. And also he says, salute him, and his mother is my mother. His mother and mine also. Who is Paul? Paul writes this. Paul is one of the greatest missionaries that the world has ever known. He was the one who suffered more persecutions than any other disciples. He was the one who started more churches than any other disciples. And he wrote about half of the New Testament. And he says, Simon the Sirene, that black Jew, his wife is my mother also. What an honor that lady got. 
but an owner his son rufus god dear brothers and sisters let me tell you if you want to be honored by the lord if you want your generation to be honored the lord you better carry this cross with you and those who carry the cross of christ their generations are blessed are blessed and then number 4 verse 43 jesus said unto him verily i say unto thee today shall thou be with me in paradise that was another accomplishment of the cross a thief inherits paradise you know the very purpose of the cross was that to give salvation as a gift for the thieves he did that you know all the religions of the world whether it be hinduism or islam or jain or sikh or zoroastrianism no matter what religion they are they all promise heaven for the righteous people but jesus christ and christianity is the only one that promise salvation and paradise to the sinners the thief inherits paradise christ promise paradise to a condemned sinner this thief didn't have to do anything he didn't have the time to do anything but he only confessed and made a prayer he said lord remember me lord remember me as sinner as i am you know jesus immediately gave him a gift the gift of paradise and he said today today you shall be with me in paradise how fast dear brothers and sisters if there is a soul here today if you are not sure where you are going to go remember jesus christ promises paradise to a condemned sinner and a thief if he did that he will do to you number 5 verse 47 now when the centurion saw what was done he glorified god saying certainly this was a righteous man who is this centurion he was a roman soldier who was in charge of taking jesus christ from pilate's court to golgotha and crucify him he was in charge of the whole drama he was an eye witness of everything that was going on he was an eye witness when jesus prayed for those people lord forgive them for they do not know what they do in the original language that is not just a prayer but it used in the continuous tense that means when they spat on him he prayed lord forgive them because they do not know what they are doing when they beat him he prayed lord forgive them because they don't know what they do when they ridiculed him he prayed lord forgive them for what they do not know what they do continuously kept praying and this centurion was there to witness and he was an eye witness to it not a single word of curse or single word that wasn't bad came out of his mouth 
He must have done several crucifixions on those days. But he never saw a man like this. So you know, he says, an eyewitness says, he was truly a righteous man. A great change has taken place in his life. Great change. And look at that verse again. Then he says, he glorified God saying, truly this was a righteous man. Now the centurion stands at the feet of that cross. Looking at Jesus. He says. Truly this was a just man and glorified God. That is what worship is. That is what true worship is. This morning you have come to worship the Lord. Not just singing or shaking hands. Or greeting people. They are all good. But that is not what really worship is. Worship is what this man did. Standing at the cross, looking at the face of Jesus, remembering what Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross, and glorifying God. Lord, thank you. That is what he did. Would you do that today? If you do that, you will go back as a changed person like this person is. You would continue to glorify God for everything that you see and you hear. And you do. True worship. The centurion worshipped. Number six. Verse 50, 51, 50, and verse 53. You know, we see a new character there, Joseph of Arimathea. When we read John chapter 19 and verse 38, there says, Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of Jesus. Of, I mean, for the fear of Jews. He knew Jesus Christ personally. He had an experience. But it was, he kept it secret. He didn't want others to know that. He must have been scared as a government employee he might lose his job. He must have been scared of the Jewish people what others would think of me if they know that I am a follower of Jesus. So he kept quiet. Didn't tell anybody. He was a secret believer. Till that day. He was scared of the Jews. But when he saw what happened on the cross. He came out openly. He is no more a secret believer. His fear is gone. He is no more scared of the government. He is no more scared of the Jews. He became courageous. He gave his own tomb or the grave to Jesus Christ to be buried. Likewise, the scripture says Nicodemus, who was also a secret believer, came out openly when he saw what happened on the cross. He also came out openly to bury the body of Jesus Christ. Both of them become strong in their faith. And they became courageous. They are no more scared of anybody. They are not worried what others would think about me. What the neighbors would think about me. What the people who work with me. What the, my friends in the school would say about me. If they find out that I am a believer of Jesus Christ. He's no more scared. You know. Nicodemus was a religious leader. He knew that the people will excommunicate him. From their religion. From their synagogue. 
But even if I am as communicated, I am not worried about it. He came out openly and gave a decent burial to Jesus Christ. Dear brothers, that has changed the life of Joseph of Arimathea that day and it's changed the life of Nicodemus that day. But you know, let me stop by asking you a question. What does it do for you? I have told you several possibilities or several accomplishment of Christ on the cross. What happened to different people? It's good to think about what happened to other people, but let me ask you what changes brought in your life because of the death of Christ. What does it mean to you? The death of Christ brought two enemies together. Herod and Pilate, they became friends. He delivered Barabbas, a great sinner. He brought great blessings in the family and in the children of Simon the Serene because he looked to the cross. It gave thief the paradise. Let centurion to the truth. Joseph and Nicodemus became strong in the faith. What does it mean to you? If you are here today, Bible says when God looks from heaven, there is no righteous, not even one. We are all enemies to God. But Jesus died on the cross to make the false friends. He doesn't want to, you to go back today as a foe, as an enemy of God. He wants to make you friend. If you are ashamed to be called as a Christian in your school or among the neighbors, or if you are a secret believer, may the Lord give you the strength. May you and be courageous enough, like Simon to Sirene. You know, all the parents like the best for your children. The best way to get the best thing for your children is to carry the cross of Christ wherever you go. Would you give yourself to the Lord? Or would you encourage your children to be on the path? May the Lord bless you and speak to you through his word. Thank you.